every our steps agreed for benching Jensen and Sneaky and also Jaya will step up for the six men the fighting star spot so in June 2018, Cloud9 shocked League of Legends fans by announcing that Jensen, Sneaky, and Smoothie were going to be riding the bench while being replaced by their corresponding Academy players. Going forward, you can be playing with the Academy team. And you're, if your goal is to be on the Cloud9 LCS team, you would prove it by being professional, working hard, working hard with the teammates to, to learn to be better. Uh, ultimately, you know, Reaper pulled me and the coaching staff aside and said, hey, listen, like this team is not going to make playoffs. And uh, what do you what do you want to, to do, Jack? Do you want me to do the moves that are necessary to make this a, a winning team? And I told him, hey, this is I'll follow your lead. If, if you want to make these changes, I, I back you up 100 percent. Tenth place to finals is a great story, but Cloud9 will do you one better. Tenth place to world. After winning the NALCS 2014 Spring Finals, Cloud9 has never been able to place higher than second in the postseason. Since then, Team Solomon has had their number. That's the game! TSN goes to full five and takes down Cloud9! The Nexus falls, and Team Solomon are the 2015 North American League of Legends Championship Series Spring Split Champions. As TSM cement themselves as the most dominant organization in North American League of Legends and win their fourth North American Championship. The TSM are gonna end it. There's an ace Here we go. It's a game. TSM by tooth and nail to defend the North. But once again, a NALCS champions cloud nine. What a... Meanwhile, cloud nine star players were getting unmotivated. According to statements, interviews, and even a video Cloud9 put out themselves, Jensen, Smoothie, and Sneaky just weren't performing as well in scrims as their corresponding academy players. Throughout the course of our preseason uh, efforts, uh, it really showed that these academy players were putting in a ton of effort and uh, playing very well as a team together. And we wanted to put to together the best possible team for our week one stage. So the team benched them pretty, I guess, unreal because it's Jensen and Sneaky, like they're kind of, it's unheard of for those kind of players to be benched, so it's like pretty crazy to me, but I was really excited because I just, I've been working really hard and I'm really excited for the opportunity. So Cloud9 entered the season with a roster mostly made up of Academy players, while their All-Stars dunked on younger players in the Academy League. Right hand side is getting low, Joey trying to pull the creeps away. But I don't think it's much left to fight for, Mark. There's his kills coming through. Sneaky is legendary with nine kills. Before the season started, no one could understand Cloud9's decision to bench those three players. But behind the scenes, there was a sea change. Reaper saw three star players underperforming and didn't hesitate to bench them, giving their spots to more motivated Academy players. And they did all of this without fear that they would lose their spot in the league if it didn't work out. We are trying to best for a win today. <laughs> Even no one trusts you guys, I'm trusting you guys. That's the only matter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Three on C9, I mean. Yeah. All right, one, two, three, C9! By week five, Cloud9 was three and seven, while Cloud9 Academy was 11 and one. So they brought back Jensen and Sneaky, and even though they tried out Smoothie, Zazel was actually more successful. Then they replaced Fenskaren with Blabber, and that's when things really fell into place. No Hawks at a half HP being chased down. This could be very, very big. Can they burn him? Has to flash away. And a sleepy Braum will put up the shield and walk backwards, stays alive. Now a re-engage comes through. Look, it's still at the fight. Lambs and fight comes down. Look at the damage though. Could they pick him off? Sneaky gets one. Will there be a trade? Not just yet. Sneaky cuts away, stays alive against Hotzer, who is losing his own health and two for zero. Pearson on the wing. Cannot quite get that kill. Zazel stays up on this one. Cloud9, two for zero in the fight. Make it a third as Jensen finds the other Danish member to kill. Cloud9 started to win games. And they weren't just winning, they were crushing their opponents. They're looking. Been looking for the big play in the front line, looking for the knock up there, not going to find the target and a kill. Jensen is godlike with the death cap explosion. Look at the back line, Hakko's dropped as well. The bot lane's already gone. The first revive coming through. No kills on the board yet for Clutch. And the back line act is not going to happen for Pepin. Swain cannot get it to go through. A four for zero, and Solo's going to be the fifth. The kills come fast and furious. A triple for Jen. 
and that is the base going down. They can stay for the turret. They time can ult some people into the bot lane. This is certainly going to be the game. Blabber, the new jungler, is a much more aggressive player than Sven Skaren. He's always itching for a kill, and that means his team has to follow. It's Santorin looking to make the play onto Jensen, who tries to get himself away now, looking to maybe turn things back around. Blabber looking to go deep, find the kill on the Keen, and first blood over to Cloud9. But when Blabber went ahead and flashed in, you guys were working together. Was it instinct? Was it coordination? Or what? I had no idea Sidrani was going to be there, and he was around mid, so I think we're just two really aggressive players, and then that's kind of just how, how it went down there, at least. Yeah, Blabber really likes killing people. <laughs> but that doesn't mean Sven Skarin can't hold his own. He showed up again in week eight alongside a long maligned mid laner Golden Glue in a match against Team Liquid, the first place team at the time. Just when you think Cloud9 has it figured out, they go ahead and do something crazy like switching up their roster again. Yeah, so Golden Glue and Sven Skarin are in, and Rupert had this to say. He's basically saying Jensen Blabber and Golden Glue Sven have been practicing as pairs. And he can't explain fully, obviously, but he's saying they've prepared for this and is strategic to win against Team Liquid. And they want the ability to swap between those duos in playoffs since you can have seven in the playoffs. Man. And with all that being said, I hate the fact that they're doing this. The last time they played Team Liquid, they won with Blabber and Jensen. You have to trust your guys that are hot. I, I feel like Cloud9 is outsmarting themselves and the potential for this to blow up is so high that even if they win against Team Liquid, I still don't like that they're subbing these guys out for this game. No one saw Cloud9's roster move coming. Golden Glue and Sven Skarin had been practicing together. And while Golden Glue is on paper not as good a mid laner as Jensen, their synergy convinced C9 to sub them in as a duo. And it worked. Sven could try to wrap around. If he goes for a flash Q and hits it, he will get the kill on Both Boke Alter. Heal. Oh, he lands a Q. Just straight up clean. Now it's Smithy's here, but Sven, he's gonna flash over and grab first blood. And now maybe he's just gonna start to fight yeah. the Smithy. Big mistake from Pogelter. Nice play from Sven. Here's Sven scaring again. The arrow as well. Gonna try and lead him into it. He doesn't land the Q because the watch is great from Pobelta, but I think that's his death. Pobelta does go down to Sven. Golden Glue still so strong. Stuns Pobelta. Q's gonna land. There's the ult out, and that should be a kill. Sven scaring on a rampage. 4 0 and 0. Sven scaring playing so, so well. Smithy's in, but they know Sven scaring. Maybe gonna try and kick him out. They actually oh, have to stun. Oh. Take him down before he can ulti. And C9 steal the Drake away as well. Oh, the arrow. Oh, this potential play. Ole is going to be the first target. They're Look for the kick, but they took down double it. Golden Glue just erases him as Xmithy kicked out of the respite, dies as well. There's the turret's going to die. They actually almost both ball at the same time. Impact going to get done on the front side. Sven Skaren tries to make it happen, but he's going to dance out. The GA still not popped his impact. He's going to be looked to fall down. Sneaky, able to get it. The next is open, and that's it. Cloud9 with another swap smash. Team Liquid. Absolutely destroyed. Destroy them, and it's Golden Glue and Sven Skaren. The subs coming in, performing so incredibly well. Cloud9 went from 3 and 7 in week 5 to 11 and 7 in week 9, earning a bind to the playoff semifinals and proving everyone wrong. And the damage onto Santorin is enough to kill him on the steps to the fountain. Cloud9, what an incredible showing here up against FlyQuest. They'll take the Nexus, they'll take the buy, and they are taking the NALCS by storm. And once they were in playoffs, they were able to show exactly why their strategy worked all season. At least, for a little while. TSM and C9 traded games back and forth for the first three games of the series, with TSM going up 2-1. to one. Oh, the turrets are falling rapidly, and it's still 15 to 20 seconds of most of them coming back. He finally fights, but it's too late. He's alone against four. There's no minions left. The result doesn't matter. And TSM are a game away from the finals. It looked like TSM had the upper hand, like Cloud9 was running out of steam. It looked like it always had, like TSM was going to win, until Cloud9 pulled out their trump card. Welcome to game four. TSM with side selection picked red side, and Cloud9 have switched around their roster. Golden Glue and Sven Skarin are in. Cloud9 brought in Sven Skarin and Golden Glue to put some fire back into C9 and finally get the rest of the way to beat TSM. It's, it's a bold move, but you, like, like they said <laughs> on the desk, if you're going to run this seven-man roster, you're already down two games. It's the time you have to do and it. This could be a fight now in the mid lane. Not going to be rooted in place just yet, but now a re-engage towards the bottom side. Sneaky being shot up. Zazel trying to run for dear life. The slows in a Sneaky. And where can Cloud9 go as Hotzer TPs in? Oh. They will find the kill as Sven Skarin kills his old teammate. The Sneaky is going to fall. Being resurrected, but still to re-engage. A huge ult out of Hotzer. Looking for more as he looks to take down. Go to Glue. Zazel gets the trade, though but it's still 2-4 to the bottom side. Both kills going to Mithy, not ideal. 
DSM gonna find Golden Blue. Roots not gonna land just yet. Now the ult's going in. The stun's a lot of damage. Minty could be falling for this one, and they will kill him off a shutdown. And look at the knockups. A double flash out of TSM getting away from that call as Licorice TP'd in. Roots up might be the kind of fight they want. A knockup on a Hauntzer. Is this the target? Down to a thousand. And the ult's coming across. QS has already burned, and they found Trundle. And Oz is already dead. It's one for zero. The ult's coming across. Grip getting low, and Pearson gets found down. But Svenskeren's gonna work to be revived. And a giant knock with the back line. The bomb's not funny. Stuns just yet. TSM still on the run. Can they snipe Mithy? And they will. Two for zero. Cloud nine. Five feet four inside the base. Hope to make it to game five. The flash Hauntzer only grabs one. But the flash forward, and Pearson gets a kill. The trade back, though. A huge knockup. Can they secure them? And Cloud nine will. A double kill for Sneaky. They're all falling now. TSM are routed. There is Inside their base, the Nexus will fall. Bring out the silver scrapes. We're going to game five. What a game and what a story. <laughs> what a series. The subs coming in. I mean, this is insane. Who wrote this script to say? I never saw this copy before. Give this that man a raise. Insane. When the summer split started, no one understood what Cloud9 was doing. And to be fair to the doubters, from the outside looking in, those first few weeks did seem terrible. But Cloud9 weren't just lighting a fire under their star players. They were showing that a deep bench and a commitment to bringing in your subs is another way to win. And they will do battle with TSM one final time today to determine who will be in the finals. Have access to the ultimate Here's and the TP, flash. and Poppy is far away. They're both going to TP to join. Here comes the fight, 5v5. Is this the one that ends it all? Greg getting away, burning down, trying to stay alive. Two for zero, Cloud9, and they can chase the opening hit. And all four for Sneaky. They get Bjergsen. It's a three for zero. They have the minions. They can end the game. I think C9 have done it. They are going to go to the finals. Could the subs make it a 2-0 to close out the series? A very small wave in front of the Nexus. The Kragas will separate. Going for turret number one. Sven and Miffy must defend against Cloud9 as the second turret falls. The respawns in 15 seconds, and they've done it. Sven scared to go. Golden Glue completed. It's the 3 2 victory for Cloud9. Can you believe it? The miracle has been completed. Cloud9. We're and from the last place to the finals in summer of 2018. Thanks to their deep bench and commitment to bringing in their other mid jungle duo, Cloud9 brought down TSM in the playoffs for the first time in four years. All that was left was finals. Welcome back to the Oracle Arena. It is time for the finals of the North American LCS 2018 Summer Split. My Despite their impressive performance in the semifinals, Cloud9 got absolutely obliterated in the finals. The next is open. There is no defense. Svenskeren shows up, but the base will fall. Back to back sweeps. TL's the best team in North America. 3 0 to Team Liquid, meaning they only had one shot left at making it to Worlds winning the Gauntlet Finals. Hello, Battle Arena, and hello, Internet. It is time almost for game one of the Regional Qualifier Finals. Thanks to their second place finish in the playoffs, Cloud9 were seeded automatically into the Gauntlet Finals. And their opponents were, once again, TSM. Such big stakes for this match. The last spot for North America at Worlds. The coveted spot here. Up for grabs between TSM and Cloud9. But Cloud9 had a plan. Somehow, Licorice had figured out that Hecarim was a counter to Aatrox, a champion that C9 had identified was really important to TSM. Well, ever since Hecarim got buffed and people started playing it in jungle again, I was trying to make it work in top lane, and we had some pretty bad results with that <laughs> before. And then uh, yesterday, we saw that TSM had like really high Aatrox priority, so like. Last night, I was like, hey, I wonder if this is a good matchup. So I tried it in a couple 1v1s and it was a good matchup. They nabbed Aatrox for themselves in game one of the series and put him on top of TSM's lines. Cloud9, let's go with this Aatrox. Yeah. Thing. Then Cloud9 brought in Hecarim to take down Haunter's Aatrox. It's Hecarim top. Over and over again. v one on to Grig, pushing him backwards, looking for some damage here. A lot of pain now at half HP. Pillar comes in to flash the follow. He's fleeing, but he's going to die. And now it's 2v1 top side. Haunts are cutting away. Jensen here as well. Will he flash the follow? Gets the taunt. The knockup. Two for zero. Cloud9. 
the wave comes in. There's the ult in. Knock for a pull the aggro. And down comes Galia. Gonna go for the knockout, but he's feared. He does not have anything but the flash, and it won't matter. Jensen picks up that kill. 5 to 3, Cloud 9. At the long range again. And as they go for Drake, they're gonna go for the engage in the mid lane. Out goes Zaya trying to stay alive, but the dive keeps going. You just cannot stop Cloud 9. An avalanche comes through. Two kills on the bottom laner. And the TP in for Licorice. He has the ultimate. He's gonna go in. He's gonna find the fear. Here comes the dive. They'll pick up Mithy. And now Hanser might have been up more than he can shoot. Doesn't find the pullback. It's a 5v3. He's still diving with the ultimate. Oh! And the them. They're gonna get another kill. Green's got nowhere to go. And Hanser's gonna have to flash away. And it is gonna be a clean series as well. Two games in their hands. Triple match point. And Cloud9 could be the team that prevents TSM from ever going to world this year. One more to go. Cloud9, 2-0. Okay, here comes the fight. Blever wants in for this fight as well. Gonna be picked up on the red side, but Licorice gets the kill on a Grig. And now they're going for two. Should be able to get it. At least at half. You're just coming okay, around. Never coming. And this could be the team fight. They're gonna get Greg, and his Q is on cooldown. No flash either. No way out. One picked up. That was nicely done. Flav is gonna flash away. Still looking for that first kill. Those Hanser comes in as well. Necrom, they're gonna find the fear. Get the kill on his vet. Beardson wants for another one. He's gonna get Blabber. One Ona, but he can't find it. He wasn't low enough to execute. Waiting for the target. Licorice is behind them already. They oh. fall back Mithy and the ult for Sven. Flashing away, but they still got the fear on the Grig. Can they get the chase down? Two more hits. Yes, they do. Down to just Bjergsen watching his kingdom fall to ashes as Cloud9 will knock down the base. They wall him off. You're not allowed on this side. This one's for winners. Cloud9 3-0. Cloud9 came out on top, beating TSM with yet another strange offbeat strategy that ended up paying dividends, leaving their rivals in the dust and punching their ticket to Worlds. C9, with an incredible run this year, coach of the split, had the faith in the right players, and a 3-0 sweep at the end of the regional qualifier. Six Worlds in a row for C9. Sneaky, congratulations on the win from 10th to Worlds. What's going through your head right now? Um, feeling pretty good. Um, even though we lost finals and it was pretty bad, we were able to come back and realize a pretty good amount of our problems, and I'm glad we were able to fix them. In an era where relegation is gone and experimentation isn't punished by the system, Cloud9 showed that winning can be more than all-star rosters and superstar carries. Winning can also be a seven-man roster, shuffling players in and out to suit the opponent, the draft, and the situation at hand. It can be a long-suffering player who just needs one more chance to redeem himself. In the new era of the LCS, even the craziest strategies can pay off, and Cloud9 rode theirs straight to Worlds. Tenth place to finals is a great story, but Cloud9 will do you one better. Tenth place to Worlds! Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.